Hello, I'm Nate the Effing Great, and what did I just watch? Yes, it is indeed back, you guys. What did I just watch has indeed returned. And I am going to be reviewing not one, not two, but three different motion pictures. Let's just get right into it. We are kicking things off with the documentary, The Hunting Ground. (sighs) This was one of the few documentaries that I have actually watched in its entirety. And after watching this one, I was more in shock. I felt sad. I felt anger. There was just so many things, so many different emotions that just went through my head after watching this. For those of you that don't know, The Hunting Ground is a documentary which talks about sexual assault as well as campuses not doing anything about it. It is a very more a vocally graphic uh, documentary. The victims all were basically talking about how they were just trying to have a fun time. It all it starts off, let me just do this. It all starts off on a very good note where all the kids, they're getting these acceptance letters, and it's just like, oh man, this is so great, we're getting into this bigger, you know, college, and we're going to start a new life together, and we're getting the dormitories, everything looks like they're just going great, and then one moment changes everything. It just boggles my mind how much of these have happened in almost the last few years. And these victims talk about how they're trying to, you know, have a good time, and they go to, like, parties, and next thing you know, their whole world is turned upside down, and they're being sexually assaulted. A lot of them have come to the campuses, and this is where I really started to feel so much anger and so much hostility, because a lot of these campuses will go on and they will say, you know, was there booze involved? Was there any relations between you two beforehand? Was there any chance that maybe it was because you were wearing something? Oh, maybe they were just a hazing, it was nothing, and blah, 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 blah. Excuse after excuse after excuse. And it did frustrate me a lot. And even when they brought in actual law enforcement, it's harder to do unless you have solid evidence. And just hearing all these stories about them going through that traumatic event and then talking to the campuses and them not doing any damn thing, it's no wonder that it's hard, you know, it's no wonder why they have such a hard time talking to anybody about this. And it's just amazing that this is still going on and these are a lot of the big uh colleges such as harvard south carolina yale all of these major campuses are having these deals and i can understand that they are trying to keep that hidden because they're trying to you know not make it seem like you know oh well we don't have this problem but they're doing it the wrong way it is one of the worst things. The fact that I understand that, that's horrible for me to even say. 
it's just one of those things that just, oh my gosh, I mean, the numbers are what really even frustrates me even more, it's gone to like, you know, the hundreds, so far up, I mean, almost up to maybe 700, 500, 400, and the worst part about it is that all of these cases have been reported, one college, one suspension, another college, roughly maybe three suspensions, another one, one expulsion, another one, zero, no consequences, nothing. So many people have gotten away with it because they are a big major league football player or they're part of the basketball team or they're just, you know, head of state and they're just trying to make sure that, oh, well, you know, we'll, we'll deal with your consequences later. You just focus more on this. And the fact that, oh my gosh, there's more happens during, like, sororities. And there's even one sorority that I cannot believe it, they had this. It is the S-A-E, the Sexual Assault Expected. And the fact that they have something like that, it's just mind-boggling that they even... I'm getting frustrated just thinking about it. And the reason why they don't even cut, you know... Of course, they don't close down the sororities because they're some of the major incomes. They're one of the reasons why things are happening. And they're going to have the grants coming in and blah, 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 blah. They just, oh my gosh. They don't know how to keep them under control. That's the problem. So it took two women by the name of Andrea and Annie who were indeed victims of sexual assaults. And they decided, you know, we're not going to stand for this. We're going to be survivors and we are going to fight back. So obviously talking to the campus did not help them any well. But what they did do is that they went into the government and they looked at everything that they could possibly look into. And they came up, they found Title IX, which states that nobody can be discriminated and it, for, at a college for any given reason. So they started doing this whole Title IX uh, movement where, you know, the fact that they are being discriminated because of the fact that, you know, oh, they don't, either they don't have proof or they don't have anything that can show that, you know, hey, this is what happened. But this is one of those things where it's a serious case, and I understand, it, oh my gosh, I can't believe I keep saying that. It's one of those things where they're trying to say, you know, this is one of the best places to go, and they're not going to add, you know, oh, well, this has a high rate of, you know, sexual assault, and there's probably a guarantee that your son or daughter, yes, it is male and female, it, it's not just limited to females, that they're going to be assaulted. No. I can understand them not putting it in there, but they could still find a way to say, you know, we're going to keep, you know, you in a safe environment and still do that. So Annie and Andrea, they travel throughout the nation, actually, while doing this movement, and they are talking to a lot of survivors who are now stepping up and they realize that they're trying to make a difference, and it all ends with them going to Congress and going to Washington, D.C., and this was during the Barack Obama... I think this was... Uh, let out in 2015, so this was during the Barack Obama era, and he talks about you know two you know two women who have the strength, who have the fortitude to stand up for themselves, and they needed more of that. So now more of the colleges are indeed being more inspected because they don't want that to happen anymore. So thankfully that happened, but it's, again, it's just one of those things where you look at all these colleges and you look at all the way that they act, it's just really hard to get behind the school system when they don't enforce their rules, when they don't act on anything, and this is a serious thing, this is one of those things where they're basically, you know, saying, you know, oh, well, we understand this probably happened, but, you know, you need to focus more on your studies, you need to focus more on your athletics, you need to focus on blah, 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 because we need that, we need that. It's kind of one of those things where it's like, you know, you scratch our back, we'll scratch your back, it'll be fine. But nowadays, it's more strict, from what I can recall. It, this is just one of those documentaries, it's very powerful. And I really appreciate the fact that there are 
women who do want to make a difference, who do want this to not happen to somebody else. It could be, you know, it could be a friend that they know. It could be a family member. It could be one of their own children. They don't want them to wake up in a world where this is still happening. They want the world to be safe. And that is something that I appreciate most from that. This is a very powerful documentary. It'll definitely get your blood racing. It'll get your blood boiling. It'll make you feel so much emotions. It's just very well... I can't say well done. It's just very, very well thought out, I think is the best way to put it. Because they had a purpose behind it, and it really did show that they want people to just start acting, start more doing something, make a difference. And you guys can definitely make a difference, so go online to seeactstop.com to find out how you can actually prevent that. So how do I transition from that to the two movies? And I think the only way you can really do that is say we go from powerful documentary to a powerful movie. And that being Hidden Figures. This was perhaps one of the best movies that I've seen from last year. Because I can't say this year because the only two that I can really say about that is Split and Patriot's Day. But Patriot's Day and Hidden Figures definitely had the same aura around them where they were both based on true events and they really tried to capture as much you know, historic accuracy as they could and definitely can respect that. Hidden Figures was definitely a very well thought out and well played out movie in which this was taking place in the 1960s, early 1960s actually, where there was still segregation and there was still uh, discrimination between not only women but also people of different color so it's one of those things where you definitely look at it and you think oh wow can't believe we were that you know mean to so many people and so many people are just like oh i doubt it was even that bad no you're right it was worse so it talks about three women who work for nasa mary Catherine, and dorothy all played by three tremendous actresses and mary works in like engineering uh, Dorothy does more of the organizing the numbers, making sure everybody is doing their job. And Catherine is the math genius when it comes down to it. And they're trying to find ways to not only get somebody from America to the to uh, space, they're trying to get them to the moon and beyond. Because how they really put it was that the first person who makes the rules really has control. And for a long, long time, excuse me, the Russians definitely had a step ahead of us. They were able to get, you know, something into orbit. They were able to get a man into space. They were able to do so much until we finally were able to get an uh, American into space. And then the next step was getting them into orbit. And it kind of evolved from there. But just seeing the story that really played out here. And you, again, feel just very disheartened because you see all the segregation and everything that went through. I mean, the best example of that would be, there were a few good examples, uh, one of them being that Catherine was uh, part of what was the higher up mathematics, so they were trying to figure out, you know, trying to get the strip working and they were trying to make sure that they have all the numbers right so there were no problems no deaths no anything and she couldn't get all of her numbers done because the problem was they still had segregated bathrooms so unfortunately she couldn't use the ladies restroom that was there she had to go all the way back to her former work which was like about half a mile and use the colored bathrooms there and there came a point where the lead uh harris was asking you know 40 minutes for you to use the bathroom why is that and she delivers this just powerful, powerful speech. And this is one of those things where it's just like, you know what? She's got my wind. She definitely has not only got me hooked in, but she also has my vote for nomination for Best Actress of the Year. And she definitely did. The woman who played Catherine did a tremendous job. She 
really